In this section, we're solving equations by factoring, and we have higher powers. In this problem, you see we have an x cubed power. Um, an x cubed power means that we're going to have three answers. Our same solve by factoring rules apply that we had in our quadratic section. The first thing we want to do is get everything to one side. So I'm going to move this 8x over, and I'm going to move this 12 over. That way, everything comes to one side. When the 8x comes over, it becomes negative. When the 12 comes over, it becomes negative. You'll see that we have four terms. Four terms mean solve by grouping. So I'm going to group the first two and the second two. In the first two, they share a common factor of x squared. So I'm going to take out x squared. What's left behind is 2x plus 3. Remember when I'm solving by grouping, I take out the third sign. So I'm going to take out the negative. In the second group, what they have in common is a 4. So basically, I'm taking a negative 4 out of this group. Negative 4 times positive 2 would give me an 8, a negative 8. So negative 4 times 2x would give me a negative 8x. I'm also looking for a negative 12. I already have the negative, so I need a positive 3 here because negative 4 times 3 would give me negative 12. Now, now that I have this, uh, G, the GCF part done, I'm going to bring down the 2x plus 3 because that's what they have in common. If I take a 2x plus 3 out of this first part and out of the second part, What's left behind is an x squared minus 4. Okay, now you want to make sure that you factor completely, and an x squared minus 4 is going to factor one more time. It's the difference of squares. So you have x and x, and 2 and 2, and 1 is positive, and 1 is negative. So when we factor this one out, this is what we get. We'll use our zero product rule and we'll set them all to zero. When we solve out the first one, divide by two, and we get that x equals a negative 3 halves. Okay, so there's one answer. When we solve the second one, we'll move the 2 over, so x would equal a negative 2. Let me clean that up a little. When I solve this last one over, I'll add 2 to both sides, so x would equal 2. And this would be my answer, negative 3 halves, negative 2, and 2. You'll notice it had three answers. Make sure that when you solve it on your quiz that you pick the one with the three answers. Okay, our second type in this section is really easy. You have your rule for um, absolute value here. The two uh, vertical bars represent absolute value. The way that you solve it is you take the inside part and you set it equal to the positive constant and you set it equal to the negative constant. Remember that it has two answers. So you have a problem here, 2x minus 1 and absolute value equals 13. It is super, super easy. The rule says you take 2x minus 1 and set it equal to 13. That represents walking right on the number line. Then you're going to take 2x minus 1 and set it equal to negative 13. That represents walking to the left a certain distance on the number line. So when you have an absolute value equals, you'll set it equal to the positive number, the negative number, and then you'll solve it and you'll get two answers. So I'll add 1 to both sides here, and 2x would equal 14. I can divide both sides by 2, and x would equal 7. So there's one of my answers. On the other side, I'll add one to both sides. Please watch your sign. 
When I do that, I get a negative 12. I'll divide both sides by 2, and x would equal a negative 6. So my two answers are 7 and negative 6.